Hi crafty friends, it's Yadli here. No card video today, I have something else for you this time. I recently got the paper pouncers from Picket Fan Studios and I wanted to leave you an honest review on them. No one asked me to do this video, so this opinion is totally my own. So I bought the Bright Rainbow pack that contains 9 colors. And then there's a neutral pack also. Um, but since I bought them, they also released a pack with 3 white paper pouncers. I will talk a bit more about that later in the video. Here you can see all those beautiful colors. There's a light blue and a dark blue one. A yellow, a violet, a light and a dark green, a red, a pink and an orange pouncer. The neutral pack contains a grey, a black and a brown one. I think I won't be using those as much as the rainbow colors, but I will see in the future. The paper pouncer uh, consists of a sponge, a holder and a handle. Um, the holders and handles are color coordinated, so that's great if you're working with different colors at the same time, uh, as I mostly do really. When we take a closer look at the pouncers, uh, you'll see that it has like a high quality makeup sponge. Um, it's a super soft material really um, and I've also learned that you do have to pounce when you add color to your project, hence uh, the name uh, paper pouncers. So it's very important that you don't use like uh, circular motions, just pounce the ink onto the paper or the cardstock. Uh, really, this is not a blending tool. Picket Fence is very straightforward about that. You can see here on the left uh, that I've ink blend uh, a piece of paper with distress inks and regular blending brushes. So that piece that's already finished here is made with my uh, regular blending brushes. I don't have footage uh, because I totally forgot to turn on my camera. Uh, you just have to believe me here. I did this with the Tailored Expressions blending brushes. So first I wanted to check if you can get a smooth blend with the paper pouncers as well. Um, I do need to say that they pick up ink very, very well. Uh, you get some very good coverage of the ink onto your paper. Uh, really amazed by this. Uh, now, if you see the end result later on, uh, you'll see that you get a smooth blend uh, with these pouncers. Uh, if you overlap the colors, you will also get a great looking gradient. However, if you want to ink blend a whole background, I would just stick to the regular blending tools or uh, blending brushes. It takes less time when you just use your regular blending tools when doing a whole background. Uh, the result is evenly as good, but it's just much quicker with a regular blending tool. I was very surprised when I saw the results. Um, it really compares to my regular kind of blending. And it was also uh, super fun to do, that pouncing. Uh, but it did took a little bit more time. On to the next test. Uh, I wanted to see how well the pouncers clean, so I just took a paper towel and I wet it with a little bit of water and then I just pounced the ink on that damp paper towel. You can see the ink coming off. Uh, you can of course also do this on a damp cloth, for example. Um, I would not recommend placing it in water, it is a sponge, so it will expand when it's wet, so really, don't do that. <laughs> um, these sponges do stain, but if you pounce them on a paper towel, there won't be any ink coming off anymore, the ink just sits on top. So after cleaning, you won't get any color contamination onto your project. That piece of paper here is still white, no color came off anymore after I cleaned them. 
I wanted to see how I could use them over uh, some intricate stencils. Uh, you know when you use regular blending tools or brushes that you won't get a crisp result uh, when you remove the stencil. Um, it depends very much on the type of stencil. Um, but I have to say with these paper pouncers it was super easy. Uh, I just placed magnets on my stencil as I always do and then I just pounced my ink on top of that stencil. The end result was very very crisp and just perfect. Um, so if you want to do some inking over those uh, intricate stencils, the paper pouncers are absolutely great for that. Uh, you can see I also got this cool gradient because I overlapped uh, all the colors. I'm very, very happy with this result. I wanted to test them on layering stencils as well. So off camera, I already foiled the Brighter Days hot foil plate. And I have these five stencils to add color to the different flowers and leaves. I'm starting with the leaves. Uh, I'm pouncing some uh, Distress ink in Cracked Pistachio on top after positioning my stencil. And as you can see, great results again. I'm doing the same with a yellow flower here, just doing that base color, so no details just yet. I will use something else for that uh, later on. And again, it works uh, really great and super fun to do. Um, super fun, but also very easy to do, and it's worked like a charm. Off camera, I also die cut a few pieces of the Spellbinders Be Bold Blooms die set. I wanted to give the different pieces a little bit of color very quickly. Uh, so again, I used the paper pouncers and I pounced on some of the Distress ink. I think I'm using uh, sponge sugar here. This worked uh, really great. Uh, also, I feel like I don't have to hold the cardstock as much as with uh, regular blending brushes. Uh, the pouncing motion keeps the cardstock more in its place. Uh, so that's also a plus. Great results again. Maybe one more thing or one piece of advice. Uh, you do want to clean the pouncers when you move from dye inks to oxide inks, for example. Or you can also buy two sets, like one set for dye inks, one for oxides. Um, I will be definitely buying another pack, just because I ink blend so, so often, and I use both dye inks and oxide inks. And here you can see uh, the base color on those little die cuts. This really didn't took much time at all. Now for those little tiny details on some die cuts, uh, I got the Pink Fresh blending brushes. Uh, this is the uh, quarter size, I think. Um, they come in a beautiful case, uh, and when they are brand new, they are protected with a little see-through plastic. Uh, the brushes seem very high quality and, well, just look at this, it's just absolutely beautiful. <laughs> they also exist in, uh, I think, uh, a half inch, so when the brush is uh, a half inch uh, wide, but they are out of, or they were out of stock when I bought them. Um, so if they are out of stock, you can always enter your mailing address and you will get a notification if they are back in store. So here I'm going in with a little darker ink onto the middle of that flower. I'm doing the same with the green leaves, uh, just adding a little bit of shading. Uh, this works brilliantly with this tiny brush. Uh, it's super fun to do again. So here just doing the same uh, with the leaf. So I'm taking out another brush for a green color. 
Um, also for teeny tiny die cuts this works great. Um, very quick but detailed way to add color. Um, for those tiny details you really need a small brush. You can't do that with the big paper pouncers or uh, regular blending brushes. Here I'm just finishing the flower by putting that yellow center on top. Uh, I uh, blended that little uh, flower center with the pink fresh brushes as well. So I'm um, putting a dot of liquid glue on the center and then putting that flower center on top. How beautiful is this? I can't wait to make an actual card with these beautiful die cuts. Now I'm going back to those flowers and leaves from before, uh, you know, that brighter day uh, set. Um, so here I'm taking the detailed stencils uh, and I'm blending on the details onto the leaves and the flower. Um, so I'm using that pink, fr uh, pink fresh brush uh, to do that. Again, this gives great results. Uh, it's beautiful. Um, I really think I should use layered stencils more. It's such a fun way to add color to your projects. And I'm not a, um, I'm not an expert on Copic coloring on or on watercoloring, so I will be definitely doing this more in the future. I didn't want to do a final test with the paper pouncers. Uh, I wanted to see if I could put Versamark ink on my project and then heat emboss it with some embossing powders. Uh, so I did this here with my uh, grey paper pouncer, but as I mentioned before, now there is a pack of white pouncers available as well. So in the future I will just use the grey for grey inks, but I will use the uh, a white one for or heat embossing. I will just label uh, that bouncer that is for uh, heat embossing. Uh, so as you can see I just pounced on uh, the Versamark ink, uh, then I removed the stencil and I sprinkled on some gold embossing powder. Um, off camera I heat set it with my heat tool and again perfect results. I really love that I can heat emboss with it as well. Uh, and since there are three white pouncers in one pack, I will use one for white ink and then one for my Versamark ink. So in conclusion, I am very surprised by these paper pouncers, also very amazed by the results. Uh, I'm definitely going to use them often in the future. They worked beautifully for all those tests that I did and I can't wait to experiment a little bit more with them. Thank you so much for sticking with me today. I hope you like this video and I will be back soon with another card project. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye!